Hi everyone, it's Alyssa from the Township of Washington Library and I'm bringing to you today another really great craft for teens and adults. This was part of one of our craft kit series, but if you did not get a craft kit, you can still participate. All of these supplies are really easy to get at pretty much any craft store or dollar store. So what we're doing today is we are painting a constellation and I'm going to show you how to spruce it up with some fairy lights. So you will need some of these very tiny little fairy lights. There they are. And the a stretched canvas, the canvas boards won't work for what we're doing so you can get the stretched canvas. And some paint for your sky. And some paint brushes and sponges, whatever else you think you will need. And that's how we're going to create our sky. And you're also going to need, actually, a printout of whatever constellation you want. I thought it would be fun to do zodiacs. I'm a Taurus. So I printed out a picture of that constellation. And I will use that to help me map out my fairy lights. But I'll show you all of that in a little bit. For now, I'm going to show you how to paint your sky. I guess I'm going to I'm going to attempt a little bit of a galaxy painting. I'm not very good at it, so I'm going to see what I can do and I'll help you follow along with me, but you can do any kind of night sky. You can do all black. You can do black with blue, black with streaks of anything. You could throw in some additional stars in the background. We'll go over some different things and you can do whatever you want because this is your painting. Time to get started. Here we go. As you can see, I have already painted my entire canvas black. And I also wrapped around the edges because I think it's just a nice, neat, clean look. It's totally up to you. If you know you're going to frame it or something or cover it, you don't have to. Um, this is almost entirely dry. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to mix some blue with black to get a really nice, deep, dark blue. And I'm going to start to sponge that onto my canvas. Yeah, this is really nice and deep and dark. I'm going to take a sponge and just start to randomly sponge it on and blend it down. Next, I'm going to go in with the brighter blue that I didn't mix and do the same thing following a similar path to where I went before. Next up, I'm going to go in with this nice bright blue and I'm going to use a clean sponge um, and we're going to start to stencil in some more texture for this galaxy, nebula, cloudburst, whatever it is that we are doing and see how that starts to blend together. So as you may have seen, I am occasionally going back in with the darker colors, the dark blue and the black, just to continue to make this shadowy and go in up here a little bit for also some dimension. I am wiping a lot of excess paint off of my sponge onto my newspaper so that I'm not getting too many globs everywhere. I don't want my sponge to be saturated. I just, I just want it to have um, enough paint to create this texture. Thank you. 
I also don't know if I like this. I don't know. I guess I could change it later. It kind of looks like a fish to me. I don't know, but we'll see what happens. I can always get rid of it later. to add some purple I mixed some with the blue and then I did just some straight up purple and I'm gonna go in with my sponge and blend it blend it blend it So I keep going back to some of the darker colors too to help bring the edges out. And I'm gonna go back to my lightest blue again and try to add some highlights and puffs and see where I can create some more dimension. go in with the lighter purple and I'm going to start to create some purple highlights and especially we're going to start focusing on the inside here and we're going to stop spreading out so far. At any point in time if you want your highlights to be brighter you can also add a little bit of white in but just make sure that you're mixing and sponging and pouncing on them to get them to blend really well. Just a little bit of white. We're not there yet. some I'm gonna try to make this pink just a touch darker it's very bright let's see what I can do and I'm gonna start to blend it into some outside edges and a little bit on the inside to create some more depth in in with some of my blues and the black as you have probably seen and just kind of blend this in with the pink now too. This is starting to actually look pretty cool. Um, ooh, from, from your angle, it probably looks cooler than it looks from my angle. <laughs> but so one of the things that I keep doing is I keep using this sponge that has like a really, really nice open texture, a regular kitchen sponge, and I'm just keeping all my dark colors on it. And that's what I'm using to kind of blend a lot of things because it, it kind of gets rid of any harsh edges and it softens the whole thing up and it makes it a little more ethereal. So if you can just see that, that pink, edge is still there but it's not as bright as it was. I'm going to go in here a little bit to add some depth and in here it's looking pretty cool go back in with 
with some light blue. And make some more highlights. Just the highlights that suggest the shape of the cloud. start to add some white to this blue that I've been using so it gets a little lighter and then I'll blend that whole layer in It's just a lot of layering. Um, there's not that much rhyme or reason, but you just kind of start with a shape and then you, you kind of go for it, you know? Go in with some purple to blend with the pink. again. Every now and then I am adding a little bit of black to the tip of this and then kind of dabbing it off so it's not so heavy so I can kind of blend from out to in. some of this blue in again for some more depth and then I'm gonna go and add some pretty strong highlight and then I'll blend that and then that should be it. take the edge of a clean sponge and I'm gonna go in with my bright blue and I'm gonna add just another highlight through here and see how that looks. Do you know what to do next? Blend it, just a little. This is not bad. It, I don't know what happened. It does kind of look like some kind of winged so sky space creature. I'm gonna blend out my edges into the black a little bit more so that I have some heavier true black. Um, and I'm gonna do that with my sponge that I painted the black background with. And then I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go ahead and plot our points for our constellation. All right, so now this has to dry. All right, so this is mostly dry, which will be good enough for me for right now. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to flip this over gently, which is why I wish it were totally dry, but it's not. Um, I'm going to put my constellation picture in here. I'm going to, actually I should do that first. I'm gonna poke some holes through here. Um, 
so that I can make pencil markings and then I'll use a box cutter to go ahead and um, make, make my holes for my little tiny lights. All right. So I poked all of my holes and I'm gonna go ahead and fit this in here as best as I can. And it's gonna be easier if you use a marker, probably a bright color to mark your holes. I realized a pencil was no good. So I'm gonna use a bright colored marker to mark my spots. That way I can more easily see it on the canvas, which is such a variegated color. I can see all of the spots that I need to cut through. So I have um, a box cutter. You can use a little exacto knife. You can use anything that has a sharp edge enough. And I'm just gonna try to try to make the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest of marks because these little lights are so tiny. So the way that it's working for me is I'm just doing short, tiny strokes. I'm not gonna stab it through. Uh, that worked pretty well. I just did short, little, tiny strokes until I kind of broke the threads down. And that ensures that it's just a little hole and it's not super big. If you try to poke it through, you're gonna get a giant gaping hole. You might rip your canvas. So slow and steady wins the race on this one. So I think all of my holes have gone through. You can see them here. Oh my gosh, it looks magical even though they're not actually done. So I also have some tape over here. I'm gonna start with the free end of my lights. I'm gonna just rip some small pieces of tape to have them prepared. And so you want to find the first light, the first part of your circuit, your first little diode right there for me and I want it to be I'm gonna stick this one through just for stability sake okay. and I'm gonna tape it right where it comes out so now it's stable I'm gonna find my second one, which is right over here, and put it behind the hole, and then tape it again immediately. So I'm piling up a lot of tape because as I'm making these twists and turns to get the next light over to its spot, it is kind of trying to pull it up. So I'm just reinforcing the tape wherever I can. Um, you know, painters, blue painters tape is not that strong. I may eventually replace this with um, duct tape or gaff tape, a little stronger. This looks hideous, but we are not here to look at the back. We are here to look at the front. I have turned off the lights, kept them off. We're going to flip it around and see what it looks like. There it is. There's my constellation. So I do have some leftover lights. You can uh, put it behind your canvas. You can leave it hanging down. If you have a lot of leftovers, you can use it as a frame. Whatever it is that you would like to do. All right, so 
I'm pretty proud of this one. This is a really cool idea. This is a lot of fun. This looks great in a basement, a teen room, a dorm room, um, uh, you know, your craft room, wherever, wherever it is. It's really cool. It's really creative. You can do, like I said, you can do any um, constellation that you would like, but I did my Taurus constellation. So there it is. It's a little time consuming, but it's a lot of fun. It's really relaxing and it looks really great. I am really happy with it. Um, so that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or you can send me an email. My email is on our homepage of our website and uh, or you can send a message through Facebook or Instagram, wherever you would like, and I will get back to you. If you do this craft, please email me your pictures. Email, tag me, whatever, whatever it is, so I can see what you have created. I would love to see your work. I hope you all have fun with this kit, and I will see you soon.